be honest, I'm not really sure what the exact moment was that I wanted to blow glass. I probably just saw someone do it and just thought it was a cool thing and then proceeded to take some classes and and uh, st I actually started working. I have to owe a, I owe a lot of um, credit to a small glass blowing studio that I started working in full time and that was a great that that was where I learned most of what I know about glass blowing was just working in there every day, you know, five, six days a week, eight hours a day and so it was a great way to learn. Uh, I think I lost count, but I'd say about 15 years. You have to have a lot of patience because it's not something that's very easily learned. It takes a good year um, to even just get like basic skills down in order to proceed to, to more involved pieces. So you really have to be patient enough and not try to rush that whole process because it just takes a lot of time. Uh, the raw glass can be bought, can be purchased in different forms. Um, there's, you can buy the raw chemicals, like a bag, just bags of raw chemicals that, like in a pelletized form, that make up glass that, you know, when melted to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time, will turn into glass. Um, and you can buy glass nuggets that are in pure form. They're already in the form of glass, and also all you do is you throw it into the furnace and it melts down. So that's, it, it melts a lot faster than having to turn chemicals into glass. Here's a handful of tools that um, is, are used in glass blowing. These are jacks, which are kind of like giant tweezers. These are used to create a neck line in the glass. So if you're making a base, you need to make a narrow section of the glass toward the pipe where the piece is eventually going to break off. Um, then we have some cutting tools over here. These are diamond shears. Um, because of the diamond, they're called diamond chips because of the diamond in the middle. This part up here, you would use to grab onto the pipe to guide it to wherever you, you want it to be, where you're going to make your cut. And when you cut with the diamond shears, it'll the end of the glass will, will be round as opposed to straight shears. The so straight shears will give you a point on the end of your cut. Diamond shears will give you with a round cut on the end. This is a Sofietta. It's a hollow tube that you blow into, you put, you put this end here into the mouth of a vessel, like a vase or something, that you want to puff it out. So you just stick that into the, um, the opening and puff through there. Here are a couple of shaping tools. This is actually just five or six sheets of newspaper folded up and then kind of burnt so that there's a layer of carbon. And it always stays a little bit moist so that the layer between the layer of carbon, the water and the steam creates a barrier. So the paper will never, it'll, it'll, when there's molten glass in this paper or sitting in it, being shaped, it's never going to burn right through the newspaper. This is a wood block, which come in different sizes depending on the amount of glass that you have. And so you would just, as you're sitting at the bench, roll the glass. The glass would just sit in here and um, it will give it this shape. And this is just a wood paddle um, to use to like flatten the bottom of the vessels. And this is Look like. This is kind of like a general purpose for small to medium sized pieces and then there's some with a larger head and the I guess the wall of the, the metal is thicker as well in order to support the weight because when you make the big piece it's a lot of weight on the end you'd be surprised so you don't really want to use a pipe this size for a gigantic piece because it actually will bend the blowpipe. The table that th these tools are on is called the Marver and this is also a very good shaping tool. Um, I guess mainly I just like the challenge of working with fire and heat and uh, just developing the skills that it takes to, to work with such a fascinating um, medium. You know, glass is just so fascinating in that it's like soft and pliable and super hot. When you're working with it, you can cut it and twist it. And from there, it, it turns into something hard and fragile and and I like how um, you only have a certain amount of time to work with the glass like you can't be in the middle of a piece and stop and take a break and you know you have to go from start to finish so I like the challenge I just like that I like I like a challenge and what I'm doing and it's always it's always something new and it's always interesting mm -hmm.